You are listening to the Hiking Radio Network, where we talk the walk with shows by hikers about hikers for everybody. This is the Hammock Hangers Podcast, where we hang out and talk about everything from hammocks and hammock camping to the group hangs from around the country. All right, everyone. Welcome back to the Hammock Hangers Podcast. I'm your host, Paul Collins, or Skunk Ape. Um, I've also got uh, my co-host, Phoenix, here with me. Uh, we have brought Cal and Kristen from Yobo Gear back on with us to tell us some um, exciting news about a new stand that they have out called The Hive. Um, if you're a member of their Facebook group uh, over on, um, it's uh, what, the Yobo, neighbor, Yobo, the Yobo Neighborhood. Yobo Neighborhood, yep. yep. Um, y'all probably heard him talking about it over there. And if you were at Hank on, you would have been able to see it firsthand. But anyhow, um, I'm gonna let them talk about it here um, some and give all the details about the Kickstarter and all you know, answer some questions that they normally get asked about it and everything else. So welcome back, guys. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah, thank you. Good to be here again. So, uh, so anyhow. Um, what we hadn't, we hadn't really talked to y'all in what about a, a little over a month since back at yeah. Hankon. Yeah. I we rode that Hankon high time. as long as we could. <laughs> 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 yeah. Besides the jokes going back and forth. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, um, so yeah, so y'all got some exciting news. Um, got the new, uh, new hive stand. Yes. So sir. y'all want to tell us a little bit about that? And we'll just dive in. You know, I know y'all got the, the Kickstarter coming up. Uh-huh. Yeah. So yeah. We'll, start we'll just we'll start chatting some details. about it. Yeah. And yeah. you just feel free to interrupt with any questions sure. or anything. But the hive has essentially kind of been in the works ever since the cricket launched. We've been okay. taking feedback from all of our customers. And you know, people love the cricket, but we got a lot of people saying, well, but I really want it to work with the bridge hammock. Um, and so Cal's brain just started clicking and, uh, the hive is kind of the conglomeration of all of the feedback we've gotten over the past two years. Yeah. Like people that wanted a, a bridge hammock stand as well. And, uh, a two person hammock stand kept coming up, but everybody was like, Oh, that's as far as everybody talked it was impossible so nobody really expected a, a two-person hammock stand you gotcha. know where you can hang side by side so um but the design of the cricket just lends itself perfectly to uh like that truss system is uh lends itself perfectly to to uh making a the the hive the t- a two-person hammock stand gotcha Yeah, so he started out by making the cricket longer for a bridge hammock, but if you make it longer, you have to make it wider. And it was kind of like a happy accident, like, oh my gosh, it's wide enough to hang two hammocks on, yay. And then he had to change some different things with the trusses and the cordage to make it really stable for two hammocks. Right. Yeah. And it worked. I think that's one of the things a lot of people don't realize, just how much... Um, mental mm-hmm. geometry and uh, you know we talk about forces and just how much thought process has to go into a design something like this to make sure that your product is not going to hurt someone <laughs> right. I can tell you our kitchen table is constantly littered with Cal's scribbles on <laughs> sticky notes <laughs> on notebooks on graph paper on my shopping list on whatever he can find there's little <laughs> scribbles of, of Cal's Genius. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. So the hive, okay, the, the cricket does not hold a bridge hammock without a little bit of modification. I know I have seen some people do it by shortening the, the dog bones somehow, but I know that that, you know, affects the hammock some. Um, the hive, though, will hold bridge hammocks and all the way up to 14 foot hammock right yeah and then the way it's designed if it's even longer than that you could actually wrap it around the the anchor point so 
as as no matter how long it is, you can get it to work, but gotcha. you may not okay. get it to work at its full length. But um, at its very full length, I'd say 14, 15 feet, it'll just attach to it without any modification or shortening at all. Okay. And you can um, use either a single hammock or double hammock as well, right? You mean one hammock or two hammocks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. You can yep. hang one okay. hammock on it. Just it. It can be in the center, or you can hang one hammock on the side, and it'll work just fine. You're not. You don't have to worry about it tipping over. Gotcha. Or getting unbalanced. Yeah. Now, I know it. Uh, at HangCon, when y'all had y'all set up, you had both of your hammocks, and then also a pet palace in the center, didn't you? For Ginger. Uh, was it a? Was it a yes. pet palace in the center? Um, we had like her hammock in the pet palace and then mine was next to it, but then okay. we left the door of the pet palace open so we could like, gotcha. Yeah. Hang out. Cause I know a lot of people, you know, they hammock with their dogs and, and all that stuff. So Ginger refuses to be left out yeah. of any <laughs> hammock camping adventures. <laughs> I just saw the, the post that y'all done where, um, uh, she slept in the hammock the whole night. For the first time. For the, yes, she has been terrified of hammocks ever since we started this company, which is ironic. But last night it got down to about 12 degrees. And normally we have like a bed on the ground with insulation and blankets. And she wears her little puffy vest, but it was still just too cold for her. And before I knew it, she was whining to get up in my hammock. And she curled right up and turned around a few times and slept all night there. <laughs> kept us both even warmer. <laughs> it's yeah. adorable. <laughs> that's that's awesome i yeah. love ginger <laughs> All right, she loves she's you. the best she's the best she loves you now you talk about it it, it holds um two hammocks but at hang con we we fit three <laughs> three on it we sure did i think there was even some surfing y yeah in there a was, that yeah. happened with three adult men yeah, so there's there's two hammocks <laughs> side by side, but then you also have depth. So yeah, a bridge hammocks, or even if you wanted to stretch a a small a shorter hammock tighter up high for a kid, or or like I said, use a bridge hammock up high in the middle. Uh, that's a good place to throw throw gear or you know a, a kid or whatever if it's a mom and a dad and and a small gotcha. and a, and, yeah. We don't recommend it for like three full-sized humans right. yeah, just for the know. comfort factor yeah, yeah, <laughs> i'm not yeah. sure you'd want anyone's butt in your face we, we were we were pretty <laughs> close we were <laughs> close yeah. quarters yeah. there <laughs> <laughs> but if you yeah. had like a small child that that would be an ideal camping situation yeah okay so not only will it fit your uh gathered ends it'll fit your bridge hammocks mm -hmm. And it will also mm -hmm. fit your 90 degree hammocks as well. So your, your Amox and your, um, uh, cause I do know there's a small percentage of people that, you know, like those, I'm not one yep. of them, but, uh, <laughs> there's a few people that, that do clear. like the Amox. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I know there's a lot of questions that, that y'all get asked on a regular basis between comparing it to uh, like the cricket and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I know one of the questions is, can I convert my cricket stand to a hive stand? And can I convert my hive stand into a freedom stands? Um, no, they're two completely different stands. Um, so when, when we made it to hold uh, two people, I had to beef up the, the legs and uh, the, the cricket legs won't be strong enough because when you spread the legs further apart, because mm -hmm. you know that go into the, a single point on the on the cricket so when you spread them further apart the forces are such that the the legs aren't strong enough to support gotcha uh, a okay. lot of weight i mean you can get away with yeah just yeah for this conversation no you cannot <laughs> they're two different <laughs> right. stands right. yeah <laughs> right um how small does it pack down and what is it what's the weight of it so I'll versus, start by saying these are all approximations because at right. this point, all we have is a prototype, but we're going right. to keep it as close to this as possible. Okay. But Cal is guesstimating 15 to 16 pounds carrying weight. So okay. still lighter than most of those heavy beach chairs, easy to throw in the trunk of your car. 
And how small will it pack down? Uh, it'll be 32 by 6 by 6. Okay. So it still ain't that bad. I mean, still no, it's very, very manageable. Yeah, mm-hmm. it still takes up very little space. I saw somebody um, on Facebook today asking about um, taking it on an airplane. They probably got that because we like to brag that the Cricket is airplane friendly. It's right. small enough to pack in your carry-on luggage, and TSA has never, ever given us a problem with our okay. Cricket stand and our luggage. Um, I'm not sure about the Hive. I wouldn't. It wouldn't fit in carry-on luggage. No, but you could throw it in your, your normal luggage. Yeah, you could throw okay. it in your checked bag, probably. Yeah. I gotcha. think they have, what, a 50-pound limit before they char- start charging you extra? Yeah, yeah I believe luggage. it's 50 pounds, yeah. Yeah, yeah I have no... I've, I've never been on an airplane. So all that's... <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> but it will, it will travel well. Okay. Yeah, because we take right. our cricket everywhere we go. So we usually take two crickets wherever yeah. we go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I'm constantly now that, living now that my you truck. have the now that <laughs> yeah. you have the hive, now that you, now that the hive is is here, will y'all still take two crickets, or you just take the one hive? Probably just the one hive. I think. Yeah. yeah. That's what we've been. Every time we've hammock camped since we got our prototypes that that's what we slept in we've yeah. spent the last two weekends in the hive yeah i mean it's like i didn't realize how nice it would be like i always i knew it would be nice about to hang together but it's it's just really nice it's it's just like being at home yeah i mean yeah we've heard that's one complaint from a lot of couples like oh my wife won't go with me because she doesn't want to sleep in a hammock by herself or um i can't sleep in a hammock at home because i want to lay next to my spouse and it really is it's nice it's you're not separated you're under the same tarp yeah. you can share body heat even you're that close to each other yeah you can set your your hammocks as close or as far apart as you want i mean you can she can i can throw my arm over in the middle of the night like you know i mean she could throw her legs over me like you know really? okay. i can ask him to go get me a glass of water <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right as he's about to fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so now with the with the tarp, is there is it a special size tarp to cover both hammocks, or will a regular regular tarp work, or what? Yeah. So if it's just one person, a regular tarp works fine. The, uh, I use a twelve by twelve, like a Walhalla twelve by twelve with internal pole mods works great. The new Dutch side zip tarp also fits yeah like pretty much any tarp that i would say um any tarp that fits the cricket fits probably 14 feet and under i bet fits underneath the will fit underneath the hive and then also on top but the tricky thing with two hammocks is to be able to fully close up the tarp right um you have to have one modification on your tarp and that's two zippered slots on either end of the tarp and both jason with wahala hammocks and dutch has figured that out for us okay yeah they've they both sewed those into tarps for us mm-hmm. okay and then all you do is you have your uh your hammocks hooked up and you put your go ahead and put your tarp on and then if you want to get completely closed in you just un unhook your uh your your hammock and run it through the hole and hook it right back on it's it takes it doesn't take any time at all to get it all set up right okay and does the tarp have to go underneath the ridge poles or can they go over no it it can go over as well i mean you're not going to close yourself all the way in on the top so it's the one if you go over the top it's always going to be like a, a big porch mode okay um like in one of our promote like if you really pay attention in one of our videos we did the 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 tarp underneath and then there's another tarp on top actually so if okay. you wanted to use it as a garage or something like you can close yourself in underneath and then have a giant porch mode on top to park one or two motorcycles under as well that works great oh, okay we have okay. some mountain biking friends that are excited because they're going to be able to hang their bikes on them at night so they can grease the gears and inspect them like when they're on their big bike trips. 
Oh, that's so neat. the hive is sturdy enough and high enough off the ground that they can use it for bike yeah. maintenance too. Yeah, there's so many things you can use the hive for. Like if you if you had a motorcycle or even a four wheeler, if you got a flat tire and wanted to work on it, you could set the hive up and throw it over the top and actually lift your four wheeler or your motorcycle up and and work on it and change tires <laughs> really? or whatever you wanted to do. So it's got a lot of uses. It's pretty neat. Okay. Yeah, one of the cool things that I saw um, when you were demoing the Hive at Hankon is, um, yes, it is wide enough to fit two hammocks, but you could put a single hammock on, all the way on one side of the bar, and it's still super stable. You're not going to be tipping. You're not going to be swaying. It, it's No matter where you're hanging, it is effortless and uh, stable. Yeah. And I mean, it's, exactly. that's the balance all the way. It goes back to the center of the stand. So it's, yeah. Well, I know when, not... when all three of us got in it at Hang Con, it didn't budge. Nope. Nope. It didn't budge the first bit. And it, yeah, it doesn't matter if all the weights, if you move a hammock all the way to the far outside, it doesn't matter if all the weights there, or if it's on the other, or if it's in the middle, it, it just just distributes itself evenly throughout the whole stand yeah if i was laying in it by myself i would be on one side and then i'd have like a a gear sling next to me like as a night table i'd have my book in there and my flashlight and whatever i needed like right next to me yeah so now i mean y'all have spent several nights using the the hive sleeping Mm -hmm. next to each other how how comfortable is it being next to somebody like that i mean I know uh, a minute ago you said that you can what spread you know spread the hammocks further apart from each other or put them closer together. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. if if you like go to roll over or something, it's a matter of do you want to the person next to you bumping into you. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we don't mind that so much. Some people might. Yeah, well, it, it's also your your how how you like to sleep too. Like if you want to spoon your partner, you can do that. If you don't want to touch at all. You can do that. I mean, okay. it's, you can set it up however you need to set it up. Okay. Um, we let a friend, a couple friends of ours borrow it the other night, and they did say they had their hammocks really close together. And right. the only thing, their comment was if they moved too much, then the underquilts got kind of pushed down a little bit, like they would push the other person's underquilt down. Gotcha. So we told them they would probably just needed to scoot their hammocks a few more inches apart. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Or you can go head to foot, you know, you don't have to, I mean, if you don't want anything at all to do with your partner, you can just <laughs> get a cricket, right? Depends on who you're camping with. <laughs> yeah. you, you can go, you can go head to foot instead of head to head. <laughs> would, would you want your teenage son's feet on your head end? Well, it's far from my head. <laughs> just it's, not like, if, it's not like right in your face. If one of y'all get up in the middle of the night or whatever, does the other person feel it in their hammock? very very little i mean i mean unless no more than like, like in a, you, a normal you, bed like, yeah same yeah. if your partner got out of bed in the middle of okay. the night there's yeah yeah i'd say even less than that even i don't know i guess it just depends on the bed you're in but okay. yeah it, it's not noticeable Mm-mm. it's not okay. like one person gets out and the other one goes flying <laughs> or falls right yeah. on the ground yeah it's not like it's not like the spreader bars that hold two hammocks apart it's it's nothing like that Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So uh, with my with my uh, cricket stand, um, I think I'm not to a cow level of setup time of like under like two minutes. <laughs> However, I can easily do it like in under ten. We'll go with that. Um, so That's what good. is what is the uh, setup time compared to the cricket to the hive? Uh, I'd say about half. Is that cow time though, or? Um, I, I think pretty much anybody will be able to do it in five minutes because we, um, and like the cricket, for instance, we tried to make it as compact as possible. So it has five sections, five segments, segments to telescope. Yeah. Five segments okay. per pole where the, the, the hive's only going to have two. So okay. it's a click, click, click instead of a click, click, click. And, uh, that, that cuts your time in about half right there. Okay. Yeah, the longest part of setting up the cricket is de-telescoping all eight yeah. poles. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So there will be less than that with the hive. And also, did you change something about the cordage? 
Um, no, or I read, did I imagine that? No, everything's pretty pretty. <laughs> well, I made everything adjustable instead. There's so there's no no set length, so you can adjust everything. Like in the legs, there's like 20 inches of adjustment now instead of the cricket has like 10 inches. Okay, but it'll be similar to the cricket where the the cordage is all done for you, and all you have to do is clip it in or hook it in. Yeah, it's all still super simple. Okay. So I guess we'll see when we get our actual, we're still working with the prototypes, but when we get our actual yeah. samples here, we'll be able to report back on the setup time. Yeah. I mean, everything's all done. It's just, I'm, I'm, I'm exp trying to figure out how light I can make it just. And keep the strength. Yeah. And keep the strength. So I got that, that one test to do because I already know what will work just fine because that, but I'm trying to see how light we can get it. Gotcha. So you trying to get it below the fifteen then? Yeah, I'm. I'm trying. <laughs> like, I'd like to get it around twelve, honestly. But <clears throat> okay. But uh, we'll see. <clears throat> but that's the the beauty of a Kickstarter is it gives us that time to kind of work things out. And you guys know Cal; he's always modifying and changing <laughs> and seeing how he can improve upon something. And so the right. Kickstarter gives him a longer runway. Yeah, like I'll have all this ironed out in the next 30 days, so <clears throat> before the Kickstarter ends. Gotcha. So yeah, let's talk about the Kickstarter a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. When is when's the Kickstarter starting? February 21st. So okay. when this podcast airs, that'll be the this coming 17th. Tuesday. Yeah, which I think is the 17th. <clears throat> yep. And yep. that'll be 10 a.m. Eastern, which my apologies, AJ, I'm sorry i didn't think that you would be in class at that time i didn't think that through but uh 10 a.m eastern 8 a.m mountain time and uh we'll hit go awesome um what are the the what are they what are they called on on kickstarter your your tiers is it tiers that they have yes. or something yes yeah so what are what are the different tiers going to be and and uh add-ons and all that good stuff so we have our super early bird tier and that is for the first 20 people that show up to pledge um the first 20 people get the lowest possible price for the hive stand that will ever exist it's going to be 649 dollars. you get the hive stand and it comes with the tarp extension poles okay and then our second tier is for the early birds and there's no limit to number of hives for this tier. It's a time limit. So if you pledge within the first 24 hours of the campaign, then you'll get hive for six ninety nine. Okay. And then for the duration of the campaign, for the next 29 days, anyone who pledges will get hive for seven ninety nine. And okay. I I tell people no matter what tier you get in on what what tier you pledge or join in on the hive that's still going to be leagues less expensive than the actual retail price that hive will eventually be at gotcha okay um is there like a, a limit to how many people can get per tier uh the only number limit is the very first tier the super early birds so as soon okay. as 20 people have claimed that tier then it's over and it goes right into the early right. tier. I, I guess what I'm I'm getting at is um, <clears throat> if somebody came in and just say they they wanted to order more than one, they can. And in, in yeah. any of the tiers, okay. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I wasn't sure if that was some Kickstarter type thing. I've I've only bought on Kickstarter like one time in the past. Well, and so I'm not real familiar with it. how it is, so. Well, Cal did a Kickstarter for his very first tiny hammock stand like in 2016 or 2017. And it's changed a lot since then. And I've never okay. done a Kickstarter. So everyone's just going to have to bear with both of us. We're all navigating this together. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but I'll t I will say it's good to go on now, like before the launch, if you're wanting to order and you're wanting to get like an early bird or one of the super early bird spots right. to go make your Kickstarter profile before the campaign launches. Right. And that way you can just log in that morning and be ready to go. 
Now, is it already set up on Kickstarter? Can people go and because I remember uh, when I did do Kickstarter the first time mm-hmm. um, that um, I was able to set like a reminder. Yes. So you can go <clears throat> to they call it a pre-launch page on Kickstarter. OK. And it's not much. It's just a page with a picture of the hive on. It's called Hive Hammock Stand. You can type that in the search bar in Kickstarter. And then it gives you the option to set a reminder. Okay. And then it will you will then be a follower of the Hive Hammock Stand on Kickstarter. Okay. If you want like more details and info and you want to see all the specs on Hive, we do have a page on our website with all of that information and a bunch of different pictures. Um, and that's uh yobogear.com slash hive hammock stand. Okay. You can find all that information on there. Or right. of course, our YouTube channel, we have a video up and we're going to be putting more up and our private Facebook group. We post almost every day, some updates about the hive and our social media channels as well. Okay. Yeah. I'll put all those. I have you send all those, the different links and everything to me so I can put them in the show notes. Yes. Happy um, to for everybody. And, uh, and everything. So, um, so which one do y'all like better? The cricket or the, the hive? <sighs> it's, that's tough. I mean, they both have their place, but I mean, like I said, I didn't realize how much I just enjoy hanging like on the, on the same stand with Kristen. I mean, it's, it's just like being at home yeah. or, you know it's, yeah if we're camping together we prefer the hive yeah okay but like like he went on a work trip to texas last month and he put the hive in his suitcase and the bed that they the gave cricket. him to sleep it or yeah he put yeah. the cricket in his suitcase and the bed that they the company had given him to sleep in was just real sketchy and not good and so he just put that against the wall set up the cricket and yeah there's there's roaches and stuff all over it's like nice just prefer to sleep elevated (laughs) i normally i normally keep mine in my truck with me all the time now and then uh my wife um i i I can't remember if i told you all this or not Uh, a few months ago her and a couple of her friends one of her friends was having a birthday and was going over to saint augustine and uh so they made a like a girl's trip out of it Mm -hmm. and they had rented a, a bed and breakfast over there and I guess it was some sort of like two story, two story house or whatever. And uh, so there was some bedrooms downstairs. And then um, how was it? Oh, the, the bedrooms were upstairs or something. Anyhow, mm-hmm. um, the the bedrooms, she said, were terrible. She said that they went in there and they couldn't even sleep in the bedrooms upstairs oh, no. because there was the the. AC wasn't working right or something. It was hot. She said it had a, a funky smell and everything else. So uh, there was like three of them that decided to go downstairs and just try and make pallets, you know, on the, the floor downstairs. Mm-hmm. But she got back and she's like, goes, you're going to show me how to, how to set that stand up <laughs> and string a hammock up. She goes, and if I ever go on one of these trips again, I'm taking it with me. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that, so, nothing beats it. Well, you just never know what you're going to get in a hotel yeah. or an Airbnb. Yeah. So yeah. it's just nice to have it there. Yeah, and then all you ever, the only contact you ever have with that place is four square inches where the legs touch the ground. <laughs> right. You're, yep. you're, you're above it. <laughs> you're above it. <laughs> yeah, my, uh, my cricket came in handy uh, quite a bit. The, uh, this past weekend, we had a, um, a dance competition that we were going to. And, you know, the competitions and stuff are all weekend. And uh, if I had to sit in those hotel chairs all day, my back would be shot. So Did I just you set it up in the middle cricket. of the hallway? Yeah, I just set it up in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't care. And I got no so, apologies. Oh, I, no shame whatsoever. I, I love got it. so many people. Love it. So many people came by and I I should have had like a flyer that I could just hang on the cricket like <laughs> frequently asked questions. That's amazing. But yeah, like, oh, you're a genius. This is smart. It's like I, I just 
I just don't want to sit in the chair. I, <laughs> <laughs> You're doing the good work, just spreading the, yeah. the good word about hammocks. <laughs> yeah, I would just get <laughs> out of the hammock, go watch my kids perform, then walk right back out, get in the hammock, and read my book or uh, take a nap. Amazing. You're a there hero, was, AJ. There was a, a church thing. <laughs> there was a, a church uh, event, uh, I think it was, was, was last month, mm-hmm. that... Um, my wife was telling me about their the church that she goes, she goes to, and uh, it was some like some sort of like bonfire type thing that they were having, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, we were going to go to it, but it ended up getting rained out. And I told her I was like, I'm taking my my cricket stand in a hammock. I go, I'm gonna I'll put that up. I go, I'm not gonna sit there in a chair. <laughs> I go, I'll put that up and just kick back. <laughs> nice, nothing so, beats it. Yep. You know? Yeah, something else that's cool about the the hive is um, uh, you can hook one like if you're you can hook two hammocks side by side, and then if you hook the the hammock up high on one end, you can let the other end as loose as it goes, and okay. the, and you just made yourself a a pretty dang comfortable chair, Ooh, oh, yeah? like a chase, yeah, like a chase lounge. So you can you can actually sit side by side. And another cool thing is you can you can get a, a bracket for the the end of the stand and uh mount a tv to it so, so there's, <laughs> there's there's a whole a whole nother thing there <laughs> so aj could in theory set up the hive in the aisle at the dance competition and watch his kids from his hammock that's right. As long as he doesn't get kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> there is that. <laughs> Minor details. Minor details. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, it was pretty loud in there. I don't know how how it was loud and there was a bunch of lights. It was like a rave. A, <laughs> a rave. Uh, uh, so you some... preferred to be out in the quiet. Yes. Yeah. What, are, what are some of the accessories that are going to be available to... Uh, to buy also during uh kickstarter so we're really excited about our add-ons yeah um we've teamed up with some other vendors in the industry that are just have really good reputations for quality work and uh we've said hey we're doing this thing on kickstarter and this hammock stands a game changer but we don't do soft goods (laughs) so we need help right um So we talked to JRB about quilts and they are doing some 20 degree, both under quilt and top quilts for us. Um, And our purpose for doing that is because if, if we're introducing brand new people into hammock camping, like people who have slept in a tent their whole life, you guys have mentioned it on the show before and under quilt is, is necessary for a good experience. Right in hammock camping so we wanted to include that so if if people were first timers then they could get all the right gear okay um we've also worked with dutchware and they are doing an 11 foot hammock for us with the ridge line and cinch buckles yep suspend 12 foot suspension and uh cinch buckles yeah Mm -hmm. okay and they also are going to do the tarp for us so okay. the uh, twelve foot tarp with the zippered slots on the end, so you okay. can fully enclose, and then people will have the option of buying the internal pole mods as an add-on, or they can use what they already have. Gotcha. Um, um, what was the other? Oh, the bug screen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it will be like you mentioned. We had Ginger in a pet palace, yeah. but we couldn't ha- hang two hammocks through it because there's an only an opening for one hammock in a pet palace. So right. uh, Dutchware is creating a bug screen that has two slots like the tarp on either end. So you can hang two hammocks. So you're both in the same bug screen oh, okay. and it will have a little floor on it. So if you have a dog or gear or whatever you want to put on the floor, uh, there will be a spot for that as well. Oh, that's awesome. So there's yeah. going to be a big, big, one big screen room. Basically. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the vendors were generous enough to give us some really great deals on, on what is really high quality gear. Um, so they're going to be at a lower price point than you'd probably be able to find anywhere else. Gotcha. And uh, we're not going to, 
take a cut of any of the add-ons. We're just going to, um, Kickstarter will take their cut and we will yeah. pass that on to Yeah, because they, they hunted up uh, extra quality fabric that they had that they're, they're not moving. So uh, that's what they're going to make uh, the hammocks out, out of for okay. us. Mm-hmm. So we can get them. We got them at a real good, real good price that so we'll pass okay. on the savings. Yeah, they were very kind to yeah. work with us. And you can't go wrong with any of them. Which name? No, no. So, well, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, the the caveat though is you have to buy a hive in order to get it an add on. Gotcha. Like right. people can't just go onto the Kickstarter and order <laughs> two JRB under quilts yeah. well, at a be discounted an price. At that point, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're add ons. Yeah. So you have to add them on to the hive. <laughs> well, I knew that question was going to come up somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that <so>. is true. <laughs> just better put that out there. That is true. Yeah, it would have yeah. probably would have been one of the first yeah. questions that, after, that we got sent. <laughs> yeah, especially after <laughs> what made us do that is after HangCon, like we're watching people that never been there before yeah. trying to run around and put a kit together. And it's like, uh, yeah, let's let's try to <laughs> let's try to cut out as much of that that guesswork for him as possible. Just give them all right, real good quality stuff that we know is good. So mm-hmm. right. they buy this and. um they they got something that they can use and it's going to last and it's going to be comfortable and it's it's going to be a good experience for them right and we yeah, get to deal with vendors that we know are going to take really good care of them yeah give right. them a good experience all around yeah right good reputable vendors mm-hmm. yeah i i know i'm, I'm really really excited about the hive i mean just just the uh the ability to hang a bridge hammock on it without modifying any of the dog mm. bones and stuff that's right that's the uh, the pinnacle for uh, for me personally, um, and you know the stability and things like that is it, it was just really incredible. Um, I think a lot, and we've had this conversation before. Um, you know, it's one thing to see the stand and stuff uh, online um, or on a Kickstarter, but it's something completely different when you're able to actually see it. Uh, in person and just to see the the craftsmanship that goes into uh, the stand and see just how mind boggling uh, like strong the, the stand really is when you yeah. load everything up. Mm. That's this guy. He's, yeah, we he's were, a genius when it comes to that. We were fortunate that the idea found chose us. So. <laughs> 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 and that you're the type of person that will, it'll stick in your brain and you'll sit there and concentrate on that and that alone <laughs> for months <laughs> on end. <laughs> but yeah, another feature of the hive though is uh, so the anchor points, they're spaced just so that if you shorten one end of the hammock up, a uh, gathered in as, as, as short as it goes it, on an 11 foot hammock, you'll have your head end will hang about 16 inches lower without even um, adjusting the legs of the stand. So, oh, okay. you, yeah. So within the stand without adjusting any leg height at all, you, you have 16 inches of adjustment just within the stand. Oh, wow. And the legs okay. will be adjustable on top of that. Yeah. So okay. you just, you got an infinite amount of adjustment. And then okay. uh, you have, on, on level ground, this is kind of interesting to me as well, too, because you can set set your, your hammock in there uh, and just make it so it attaches to the stand in the same fashion every single time. And then the the legs have two-inch adjustments, so up to 20 inches. So it's it's almost like a sleep number hammock stand. So if you <laughs> if you find <laughs> like – if you, if you really want to try to get dialed in, you can – you can just hang your hammock on the stand the exact same way every time and then try lowering your head in two inches and then, you know, for a few nights and then four and then six and you can like just find your absolute sweet spot and then it's totally adjustable. It's totally repeatable every time. Okay. So that's kind of cool. That's pretty neat. So I have to, I, I do have to ask, even though we're, you know, mainly here to talk about the hive and all that. Are there any other ideas floating around in your head? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's anything lots. else. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, noon, and night, Paul. Oh God, that's funny. Do you, the number of times I hear, "Hey, babe, what if we?" 
and then just <laughs> launch into a whole new thing. And we had to have this conversation. Like I had to prepare myself like, okay, is this a, is this a just dreaming conversation or is this a strategizing like rubber hit the road conversation? Like, do I need to act on any of these ideas or are you just thinking out loud? Because it was starting to stress me out the number of ideas this man brings up <laughs> because I instantly go into analytical mode. Like, okay, how are we going to make this happen? What do we need to do? And that's just exhausting. <laughs> so we've started, he'll tell, he'll, he'll say, this is just an idea. And then he'll just, I'll just let him dream. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, I, I, the only reason I even ask that is because, I mean, between the, the freedom stand, the cricket stand, and now the hive, it's like, you know, how much more can you come up with? You know, you know, I mean, just, I'm, I'm amazed at, at how these stands are. I mean, I never, in, until, until I saw, AJ's cricket stand. I had never even really thought about buying a stand for any any purpose. It's like, why would I ever need a stand? I you know, I'll just find two trees. <laughs> but we hear that a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah I have found the number that one comment. <laughs> I have found that out. Yes. But so. we look at it a little different. It's like you made this investment. There's a reason you chose to sleep in a hammock. Yeah. And there's a reason there's one hanging behind you in your house. It's like, yes, you, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not the absence of trees. It's you have the most comfortable bed in the world. Now right. you can use it and you can take it with you wherever you want to take it, wherever right. you want. So it's, yep. uh, that's, that's, and that's originally was my idea behind coming up with stands. It was, it was always about experiences for people let let them and and freedom to do what you want where you want to do it right and that's that's actually why i started do, making stands okay yeah, like, because I, I, I was always you're always go ahead i would i would completely echo the the freedom aspect of it um you know i've used my stand um a lot indoors i've used it uh outdoors um you know when i had surgery earlier the, the last year i slept in my uh a cricket inside my house for a good solid two weeks after that. Um, whenever we go to, um, you know, when we travel, sometimes we'll stop and either stay at my brother-in-law's or this, uh, over Christmas, we stopped at uh, Heather's house and I actually set up my cricket in her house just to have another bed, um, that we could use. Um, uh, we took it to a ski trip this year. Um, and it allowed me to, escape the insanity that was 14 people inside one house i can set it up on the porch everyone stays alive you know it offers that that freedom of escape um you know i, I mentioned taking it to the dance competition so it's not just a, a piece of gear that i use on a regular basis when i go camping which it absolutely do um even when i know that i'll have trees sometimes it's good to know that hey if i'm going on a a hike or if there's a place near the campground that I would like to go just set out and chill, I can take that stand, I can set it up, I can move it. Um, and I, I have that, that, that freedom to set up, not just as a base camp, but as a traveling uh, piece of gear that's easily movable, easily set up, easily packed down um, and taken with me. So it really is a, an amazing piece it. of gear that I've gotten a lot more use out of it than just oh this is just another piece of hammock camping gear yeah uh, and it I'm... allows you to get more use out of your hammocks and your quilts Absolutely. and yeah. your tarps that you spent all those all that money on and i know i yeah. love this setting love setting it up on the beach whenever i mean i, I mm. generally don't like the beach myself <laughs> but when uh I, I, well i mean i burn whenever i get out yeah. with uh, so yeah. but when uh, uh brit and travis and and i went um camping what a few months back and they wanted to go fishing you know they wanted to go to the beach to go fishing well you know i didn't feel like you know renewing my fishing license or anything like that so I was like, <laughs> i've got my stand here i'm just gonna take my stand and i'll set it up y'all can fish and do whatever you want i'm just gonna kick back and relax and probably take Sweet. me a little nap <laughs> Love yeah. it. that's one of my favorite pictures of the cricket is where you guys set it up with the yeah they found out they found out that they could take and cast all their lines out and then just kind of use the the cricket stand to to hold their poles too 
cricket. Yeah. The so they would, they would, they would prop their poles up. They're like, Paul, let me know if you see any movement. <laughs> okay, I will. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Next time you'll have to uh, bring it and set some misters up on it. Oh yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I'm trying to talk Dutch into uh, if if I can't get Dutch to do it, I'll, I'll get Jason to do it. Um, make a um little bikini top cover for oh, yeah. it that just goes over the top yeah that's we're gonna start offering a sunshade i think that would be a good job for jason mm-hmm. yeah because he's a little bit smaller operation yeah that, yeah so in so in hours that that would fit with him better i think but yeah, yeah just a little sunshade that little yeah. sunshade that will kind of strap onto the ends and have like a probably about a 10 inch flap on both mm-hmm. sides just oh, nice. to, to keep the sun out yep perfect because well, like, we'll, we'll work on that for you too because it's something we've been wanting to do as well so okay mm-hmm. yeah i mean because you know like whenever i was at the had it set up at the beach um you know i'd, I'd set it up so that the sun was coming from behind me but mm-hmm. then you know once the sun started coming up i'd have to get up and kind of move it to keep the sun out of my face but i didn't want to set up a, a full tarp either right so mm-hmm so that's that's something else we're going i mean it's not related to that but um so we were thinking about because the hive takes up has a certain footprint um because it's wide so it's gonna it's gonna take up six foot width wise no matter what but if you want to use it in your house uh i also am going to make it uh the top the top rails adjustable so it'll be adjustable probably between eight and 12 feet 12 and a half feet in length in length okay so you'll be able to adjust the the length of it yeah okay yeah and if you use the the cross bracing i made for the top um makes it so it can't rack side to side you can actually hang diagonal across it as well oh wow okay so i don't think we we uh talked about this a minute ago um just you saying that made me think of it the the footprint what's the the difference between the footprint of the cricket versus the hive so the footprint of the cricket is about 39 inches by, um, what, 10, 6 long, 10, maybe 11. Yeah, 10 foot 6 is long. Yeah. Okay. You threw me off when you did inches and then oh, yeah. feet. <laughs> so about 10 and a half feet by 3 and a half feet ish, right? Okay. Yeah. 3 feet ish. Ish. I don't have that in front of me. So, no, yeah, convert so that about a trick. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> multiply it by 2.5 and you'll yeah. be pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the so the 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 hive is going to be the the footprint on the base is just over 5 feet. Um so the width at the top is um a little over 6 feet. Okay. And then uh, at the bottom, it'll be 14 feet, and then you'll be able to shorten it up to like eight or nine. Okay. But if you're using your bridge hammock or whatever, you're going to have to have it at full length. No, you don't, because it's the bar the way it is. Um, you could put Prusix on both of the dog bones, and instead of bringing them back to a single point, you could leave them far apart, you know, where they'd naturally oh. be if you if you had a big distance interesting so you could you could hook them up that way okay we'll have to do a youtube video for all yeah. of these but, things but it's some tutorials i don't think it'll be really necessary for most people they'll be able to use the full length of it okay well that's pretty neat yeah i'm really looking <laughs> forward to the adventures of uh phoenix and hot <laughs> 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 me too is that going to finally get your wife hammock camping, AJ? Um, probably not, but um, it's worth a <laughs> shot. Yeah, I will, yeah. <laughs> I will say it will, but in reality, I mean, if nothing else, it'll definitely offer a, an ability for me to uh, hang like with one of my kids when I want to. Um, yeah. And- not you want to. want to how yeah. often is that uh, you know, that's what was kind of exciting <laughs> that's what the cricket's for they're a that's little older kind of now so that me. time has gone down significantly yeah. yeah 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 so you spend all this time like it like you we all try to introduce people into hammocking and i won't say hammock camping because 
we, it's the you like I'd I'd like to see a lot of people just use it in their house to replace their bed, honestly. And uh, but now the the issue is so you show, set somebody up and then they're off, like they're never close to you. So if they have right. a question, they you it's not answerable immediately, and they'll get questions in the middle of the night or whatever. But now, if there's they're they have a question, they're feeling a draft and we need to adjust their quilt or something and show them how stuff works. You're right there. So right. it's, it's a lot easier to introduce people and uh, make them have a better experience. Well, I know I'm going to get one cause I'm still trying to get my wife into going out there and camping and stuff. So, mm-hmm. And I'd like to see Boy Scouts use it a lot. I think that's a great application for Boy Scouts. Well, it, no, it, it it actually is because um, we just found out not long ago that they have to camp buddy system mm-hmm. type deal. So they they can't, you know, sleep in a single hammock by themselves or anything like that. They have to always have their buddy with them, and so that's why they always yeah. use tents. Yeah. So this, you know, that would eliminate that. Yeah, mm-hmm. and with the tarp all closed in, and if yep. even if we made a, a full length uh, uh, footprint for it, you know, a, a ground tarp, mm-hmm. uh, it'd be hard to argue that that's not a tent, <laughs> right? And uh, because that's that's another rule they have. A lot of them have too is they can hang in a hammock, but they have to have a tent set up in case weather comes. Oh, okay. because and well. and that's how they're the the training is or the education is going that hammock is um recreational and not functional so much i've gotten which we have a few things to say about that <laughs> yeah I, I think i've gotten wet more times in a tent than i have in a hammock yep i know you're literally like 18 16 18 inches off the ground it can rain all at once and you could set it up pretty much in the dumbest place i know and- i know in a hammock i have <laughs> never gotten eat up by ants like i have in a tent mm-hmm. yeah yep yeah and also like the the quality of tents that you know a bunch of middle schoolers or high schoolers are using <laughs> you're not taking on the at uh and so <laughs> i mean the, the you're looking at walmart quality uh ozark trail uh tents that you know I, I would argue are just not sustainable in the the long term yeah. thing. They're good for maybe right. a couple trips, but you know, yeah. if you're looking at uh, something that you're going to take for years on end through your entire scouting journey, then you know, even a cheap hammock is, is uh, I would yeah. say more sustainable. Um, I yeah, you know, I think back on my time in scouts, and you know, it, I don't remember a trip um, in a tent that it didn't rain that our gear just didn't get shut soaked because the tents mm-hmm. that we were using were cheap Walmart tents. Cause that, that's what we could afford. And we were always yep. on the ground, um, you know, live and learn, I guess. But I mean, <laughs> he, he, I've ridden out some crazy storms in a hammock and been completely dry mm-hmm. every single time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think I've only gotten wet and, and, my hammock one time and that was just because of my stupidity I, you know i didn't pay attention to the the weather that we had a bad storm coming in and i fell asleep in the middle of the night you know my tarps in porch mode you know we got sideways <laughs> rain coming in you know yeah. I mean, that was that was my stupidity yeah you know yeah so. but to aj's point yeah those ozarks and all those i mean nobody buys those without expecting to buy another one maybe even the same year yeah. I mean, yeah, they just, or at least by the next season. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, they don't last. Nope. So, um, I got a kind of twofold question here. Um, most people uh, don't know, but I mean, me and Paul do because we know you guys pretty personally. Yovo Gear is a pretty small operation. It's just you two and one other lone poor unfortunate soul. <laughs> yeah. um with, with that being case, i mean you were the the definition of uh, what i would consider one of our cottage vendors um mm-hmm. with the launch of your kickstarter um and that's going to run about 30 days when are you best case scenario planning on shipping the kickstarters so on our estimated calendar and that's the thing that everybody 
we want everybody to realize with Kickstarter is everything is estimated and we will do our best to stick to that timeline. But that's part of the reason you're getting a, a much, much lower price point than when the product actually hits the market is because you're in on the long along for the ride with us. Um, so uh, we are estimating July for ship date of the products. Yeah. So 30 days for the Kickstarter campaign. And by the end of Kickstarter, we will have a good enough idea of order quantity mm -hmm. to place and we will order that and uh, production could take anywhere from 30 to 45 days and then getting it to us where we will do all the assembly and uh, packing and get it prepared to send out. So we're thinking we're just going to say July and, uh, via Kickstarter, everyone who's backed the product project will get many, many updates and we'll be able to say, okay. Oh, here's how this is happening, happening. And this is clicking right along and we're right on schedule. Or hopefully that we won't have to say we had a snafu and there's going to be a slight delay, but we'll keep everybody updated via Kickstarter. Yeah. Okay. Well, because and the bonus is, of course, we already manufacture, so we already have um, our suppliers in place, and yes, right, we already know how how every everything works. Uh, we tried super hard to to source uh, the tubing in the United States, and it just there just isn't a place that does it. Um, but we're hoping long term that we'll we will actually manufacture it, hopefully, but. Um, so there's that, like the, the, my very first Kickstarter, like for instance, I knew nothing. So I had, and I had a, I had a, a decent, a reputable supplier, but then I was too small. So they kept pushing my, my time out. And then, so they finally get everything built and then we get it, it's shipped. And then I had, you like, Oh, I got to pay tariffs on this. Wow. Tariffs are a lot. <laughs> and then all the, all these different <laughs> all these different fees. I actually ended up losing money on the first Kickstarter <laughs> because there's all these added fees by the time you get stuff. And it's like, Oh man. But since he's been through all that, luckily we yeah. know more what to expect this time and we can kind of troubleshoot ahead of time. And yeah. Now be we prepared. Yeah. Now that was my point is we've, we've done it. We got our supply our suppliers Right. Uh, we know exactly what we're doing. So it's, there's no, you know what to expect and everything. Yeah. And Kickstarter backers, they're fun people because they're like, cool. We're in, we're in for the ride. We're here to witness right. this and support you guys. And usually all they require is just as long as we're being upfront with the updates and letting right. them know, here's where we're at. Then, uh, the Kickstarter peeps are, are on board for it. Gotcha. So if you could hang uh, anywhere in the world that you've either already been to or that you would love to go to, where would you like to set up this hive for you to just enjoy that one place? I don't know. I really enjoy uh, hammocking above tree line in the, in the mountains. That's, that's one of my favorites. Um, he also enjoys making me hike above tree line. <laughs> multiple times this summer <laughs> and then i mean so realistically you can do that for maybe three maybe four months a year uh and then um just cool beach locations i think i just like i love going to mexico mexico's amazing got a lot of neat beaches there i liked our setup at hangcon because we we're in this grassy campsite with there were no hammocking trees there, but we wanted to be there because it was directly across the road from our booth. Mm -hmm. right. So it was close enough where we could keep an eye on things. Um, but when we were ready to be done for the day, we could go right to our hive across the road. And, yeah. and then and, of course the reason that I, I hammock is because it's my, it feels so good. Like I feel a hundred times better after sleeping in a hammock as opposed to a bed. So ideally, I just like to sleep in my bedroom in it every night, honestly. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you have a, a, a partner, a wife or a partner, you don't uh, usually end up ended up in another room if you want to do that. So this is kind of cool because it's literally works just like a bed. I mean, everything's almost identical. So do you have it set up in your house now? 
I do not. No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Our bedroom isn't big enough for a bed and a hive. Gotcha. But that's the goal. Yeah. <laughs> so Or Cal's goal is we just get rid of the bed altogether. Yes, that would be my goal. <laughs> oh, that's something else that's kind of might be possible too with the hive is that it can set up over the top of a bed so somebody could like hang in it and the other person could sleep in the bed if they preferred bed over hammock so there's there's also You're getting that real option. crazy with your bedroom furniture i'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> there's there's other advantages <laughs> <laughs> on that this note, this is a G-rated uh, so, podcast. <laughs> so you guys have um, been huge supporters of the hammock community. Uh, you've been to a couple of hangs. That's how we first met um, at Fall Sprawl. Um, and I also know that you go to a lot of other uh, kind of expos, uh, overlanding, and things like that. So, what do you find different about the hammock community? And what are your favorite things about the hammock community specifically? <laughs> Well, first of all, we don't have to explain to the hammock community why our products are cool. Right. They just look at it and they get it. Um, the hammocking community is welcoming and warm. And I mean, the very first hang we showed up at, we didn't know a single soul. And we left. It was the Palmetto State Fall Sprawl. Yeah. And we left with friends for life. We met you guys there. Um, same You're with stuck with us now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're so grateful. We love it. I mean, we have friends all over the country now, thanks to the hammock community. Yeah. And you guys, like the hammock community, are just great people. Like I, I tell everybody, it's like, I can't like think of all the times you go to just somebody's house or to a, a something at a school or something. And you're like, uh, there's always one person you're like, man, but <laughs> you, you you go to these you go to the hangs and I there's I haven't ran into anybody that I I wouldn't that I just love you just all you guys yeah everybody everybody's there. just great they're all really good kind people they're curious they got good stories yeah I know we look forward to y'all coming down oh, we love it we tell our Wyoming friends all the time we're like you you're not gonna believe and then we talk about you guys and then AJ said this and then <laughs> Scott Gabe said this and they're like. Ooh. <laughs> how kind but, of people y'all hang out with <laughs> <laughs> but to answer your question at the other expos we do a lot of educating like so we go to a lot of non uh non hammock specific uh expos where yeah. people don't even know that you can s sleep full-time in a hammock so it's like uh so it's a lot of educating. There's they're, yeah. they're still good people and they're still really curious, but uh, a lot of them act like you're trying to trick them. It's like, it's like why, yeah. are you, why are you trying to get me into this hammock? Well, so 99% of people outside the hammock community don't realize that hammock camping is a thing. Right. And as tiny of a business we are, we've made that our goal to bring more people into the hammocking community. And so that's why we go to these expos because I think it would be a little more enjoyable for us to just go to hammock specific events, but we go to overland expos and camping expos and hunting and fishing expos. And we get to show people, um, here, just lay down in a hammock and see how it feels. And this thing is called an under quilt and, and this is what it looks like all tarped up and, uh, we met a guy at the Overland Expo on his motorcycle. Oh yeah, right. Uh, he yeah. he started out in a tent and he was walking through the booths and he saw us and he spent probably an hour and a half at our booth. And by he the said end, that, was, that was Ray. That yeah. was Ray. Yep. Yeah. yeah, he's one of our good friends now. Yeah. And uh, by the time he left, he said, "Nope, this is exactly what I want." And he bought the whole setup and. Uh, now he's a he's a full time hammock camper and and that's what we want to see more of to to just show people how awesome this is. Well, it was after and, it was after that expo that he came to Fall Sprawl. Was it Fall mm -hmm. Sprawl? Yep. Yep. Fall yeah, Fall Sprawl. Yep. And then was it HangCon? Yeah. As well, yep. him and his wife. And that's the perfect example because if we can bring more people into the hammock camping community, then HangCon can grow, Fall Sprawl can grow, the vendors 
you know, all these cottage vendors can grow and just the community as a whole can thrive. And that's right. what we'd love to see. Whether they ever buy a stand from us or not, that doesn't matter. Right. It's can we contribute to the whole community at large? We're really passionate about that. So with that, um, if I'm a new camper, um, why should I try hammock camping? So what are you telling people? That's all you, babe. <laughs> well, <laughs> on the spot. <laughs> I, no, all the reasons we just talked about. It's like you don't have to like most. OK, so if you're in a tent and it's raining one hour, you're like, yeah, two hours. You're like, hmm. Three hours, you're like, gee, I, I, I hope I picked a good spot. Four hours, you're like, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Down the river somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and this for for just to not have to worry about that for one and another, it's just it's it's the most comfortable. Like it's more comfortable than a, your bed at home. Yeah. And you get to take it everywhere with you. So why would you sleep on the hard ground? And another reason, like a lot of people don't like snakes and bugs and, and, and stuff. Well, guess what? <laughs> you're, you're up above them. They're all crawling down there. You're fine. And the footprint, if you want to be eco-friendly and not smush a bunch of grass or move a bunch of rocks and, you know, abide by the leave no trace thing. Yeah. If you're right. in a hammock, you're completely off the ground. If you're using a stand, then you have the tiny points where each of the four legs is on the ground. Yeah, you got half right. of one of your foot. Yeah. Your footprints, imprints that your whole stand makes up. So yeah. you're it's yeah. So if you really are make no impact, leave no trace, uh, hammocking is ha hands down yeah. your your way to go. Right. And on yeah. the comfort note, I'll say I grew up my whole life camping in a tent and I've always loved camping, but I've always just I sort of always just accepted that I wasn't going to sleep very well because I don't sleep well on the ground. It doesn't matter what kind of mat I have. The sleeping bag is never comfortable for me. And it's like, well, that's okay because I'm camping. I'm out in nature. And then right. all of a sudden, past five years since I met Cal, I am, I get the best of both worlds. I get the nature, the camping experience, and I can sleep eight to ten hours comfortably, uninterrupted because uh, of I'm, a hammock. I know I'm. y'all y'all probably heard me say it before on the – on one of the episodes also, um, you know, like what Cal was saying a minute ago about being more comfortable than, than a bed. When my wife and I bought this house, we decided to buy a whole new bedroom set. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so I was like, well, if I'm going to get a new bedroom set, I'm going to get one of the, the Tempur-Pedic cool touch, adjustable frame, you know, <laughs> all this crap, you know, because mm -hmm. the last, uh, our last bed, it was, it was Tempur-Pedic also, but it wasn't the adjustable and it was one of the older mattresses and all that. And I, I did not sleep good in it. I still yeah. don't sleep good in this one. I mean, <laughs> to me, it was just wasted money because I, I still toss and turn sleep hot and everything else. And I get up most time, most nights and come in here to, to my hammock mm -hmm. and crash out in here and, that's that's it. I, I sleep wonderfully. Yeah. yeah. And you yeah. can't clean a bed. Yeah. You've got this big, dirty thing that you can never clean. Yeah. Mattress. Yeah. yeah. So it's, I, it's, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's ever seen, you know, the, you know, when they, they take and they do the whole vacuum testing thing and then show everything up under a, a microscope, you know, oh, all geez. the, the, <laughs> The dust mites and and all that stuff, yeah, it's pretty nasty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like if you have allergies or yeah, idiot, like a hammock yeah. is another. That's another reason to hammock. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <sighs> so. Sensory issues because it cradles you, depending on yep. the hammock. I mean, if you want a hammock, you can you could make it so it really cradles you. So yep. if you have sensory issues, they're fantastic for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Back pain, that's yep. a huge one. Cal's a, a back pain sufferer. Uh, that's that's why I sleep years. in mine a lot. Yep. My, and uh, I can't tell you how many people, like you just type in back pain in the search yeah. bar in the Facebook, hammock Facebook groups and story after story. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my, what is it, L5S1 um, mm -hmm. is is all jacked up. And I mean, there's times that I, I move, I, I can sneeze and, and literally you know, cripple myself. Yep. And, uh, just take and kick back into the hammock and say, okay, done. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> you know, so All right, is there, uh, anything else that y'all want to add about the, the hive or the, the cricket or even the, the freedom stand or. 
Well, we just we just appreciate this community, all of y'all. We appreciate you and AJ and what you do to build up the community and with HangCon and we've met so many great people and we love interacting with y'all on uh, all of our social media channels. You're all invited to our private Facebook group. Um, if you have questions, I know a lot of times if you have questions about a product, you don't necessarily want to talk to the owners of the company about that product. You can talk to other customers who have paid for it and used it and experienced it. Our Facebook group is a great place for that. Right. So you can say, Hey, you know, was it worth the price or does my such and such hammock fit on such and such Yobo stand? Um, that's a great place to do that. But we just, we love this community and we're pleased and honored to be a part of it. Awesome. Yeah, for sure. Well, we are, I know, I know AJ and I are definitely glad to, and, and proud to call y'all friends. Um, right back at you. Yeah. Likewise. So. But yeah, we're just all, all about, on the other hand. Know. I'm still up in the air about, but uh, yeah. we, we love AJ's it. questionable. <laughs> AJ, I think at this point, AJ and I just have a pact with Hancock. Is what it is. <laughs> but you have this excellent podcast chemistry, so you guys are just kind of stuck together. <laughs> yeah, the glue just There's keeps getting too. stronger. <laughs> <laughs> the cement is hardening. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. guys need a hive so you can get yeah. even closer. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I will say, you know, you know, I, I know a lot of the, the, it comes up a lot like, yes, um, you know, is, is the gear expensive? And I will, I will hands down say, uh, without a shadow of a doubt, it is worth every single penny that I paid for my cricket stand. And I am a hundred percent sure that it will be worth every penny that I pay for the hive stand. Oh um, yeah, absolutely. It, I mean, same, same thing. I mean, I hear, you know, I've had people, you know, mention you know the price or whatever you know to me as well but i mean i would rather <clears throat> i mean I, I know the quality that you know chris and cal put into the, their products and so i mean i would rather spend a little more and get good quality for something that i'm only going to have to to buy one time than to try and go cheap with something and end up having to replace it, you know, three, four, five times, and end up spending twice as much as what I would have to begin with. Exactly. You know, so, yeah, but. it's not our goal to be the cheapest hammock stand on the market. It's our goal to have a really versatile hammock stand that's well made that you can depend on, and to take care of our customers before right. they decide to choose to purchase and after they've purchased. We're here to answer questions or help you out or give you pointers or Cal will even go set up your stand for you at events. As, yeah, many, of, <laughs> as many of the hammock King community have learned. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know it, uh, uh, fall sprawl last year. Um, he was running around all over the place, setting up for everybody. Um, <laughs> is there any other questions you got AJ? Um, no, not really. Mm -hmm. No. Hmm. Is there anything else that y'all want to add? Hmm? Is there anything you wanted the hive to do that you don't know if it does or not? Mm, I think we covered everything. Um. Now, oh I yeah, think. I do have a. Does it have the push buttons or does it? Is it? <laughs> so what the I push buttons. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. So what I did is I made the push buttons bigger, and so they're they don't they're way not they're just they're super simple to push. Like, yes, they okay. won't be the same as the cricket push buttons. Yeah. I know it'll be wrong with the cricket ones. Well, it's, and then something else like... people don't know is you can pop out all the push buttons and push them down to relieve the pressure. Squeeze them together. Oh, yeah. yeah, and then reinstall I'm them. It's always pushed and twisted. Yeah, and yep. it's super and it simple if you do that, but if you have arthritis or yeah. something or if like you can't tell your 8-year-old kid to put it together if they don't if they have little tiny hands. So some people have had problems with the cricket push bun buttons and we understand why. Yeah. Okay. That's a good point though, AJ. So I'm going to say an eight year old kid can probably push, push buttons on the hive. Hmm. Okay. Just made it way nicer. Yeah. I don't think you'll be able to yeet the hive. 
however. Yeah, you could. I don't know if it'll. No, I bet you, but probably what, eat it. What What is eating? Well, just, have you ever seen us eat a cricket? It. A who? What? <laughs> we were at Fox. I don't know that I've ever heard that word. That's, so that's, that's part of Cal's oh, sales. Oh, no. Thing. Cal will pick up a cricket and just chuck it as far as he can. Okay. And then go pick it up and sit, lay in the hammock to show how durable it is. And uh, yeet is a word of of the young younger generations. And uh, I believe it was Roger McIntyre at Fall Sprawl. No, it was Paul, the other Paul. Okay. At Fall Sprawl, he was like, "Oh, you yeeted the cricket," (laughs) and I just looked at him and I said, "You know that word?" Because we have teenagers, so. Yeah. We knew that word, but I have never heard that word. <laughs> I really haven't. Yeah. Well, oh you God. eat it. You you get rid of it rapidly. That's yeet. So okay. so you we like it. to yeah we like to eat the cricket. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Phoenix's son yeeted the cricket at HangCon this year. Okay. Um, we're thinking of kind of making a contest out of it one of yeah, these days. Who can yeet it the furthest? But get the free one. The hive. <laughs> I think if you were going to eat the hive, you, you'd have you, to be really tall. If you really do that tall. contest. If you do that contest, yeah, the one that, that throws it the furthest, yeah, that would be awesome. Okay, well, set it up, put it on the schedule for HangCon next year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> that will be a contest, it'll be like the caber toss of the hammock community. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, if, uh, if nobody else has anything, um, we'll go ahead and, and wrap it up. So I appreciate y'all coming back on and being a guest on again and telling us all about the hive and like before, if there's any other ideas that pop in your head or y'all just want to even just come back on just to, to chit chat for a while, just give us a holler and we'll have y'all back on. Well, thanks so much. We appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. We appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. Yeah. Not a problem. And, uh, I will be putting uh, all the the links and info and everything else to the uh, Kickstarter in here. Um, I'll put the, the links to the Facebook again as well and uh, everything else. And if anybody has any questions, um, just reach out to Kristen and Cal. Um, I think Facebook would probably be be the best, right? Through Yep, we're on all the things. So Facebook, email, Instagram, DMs, wherever. Okay. All right. Well, but if you are I'll interested have... in um, buying a cricket stand or two sides to a freedom stand, do we want to tell them about the uh, Hammock Hangers promo code? Yeah, you still got that yeah. going, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'll, I'll put that in the, the links as well. Uh, but that was Hammock Hangers 15? Yes, sir. 15% yep. off. Yep. Yep. And that's for yep. the, the cricket stand or the freedom two sides. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Okay. All right. And then. Uh, you know, just everybody look forward to the 21st at Yay! what time? 10 a.m. Eastern. Sorry, 10 AJ. 10 a.m. Eastern. <laughs> That's where it'll start. And uh, just remember, if you want in on that, that early, early bird uh, special, which was for the first 20, mm-hmm. um, you know, that's you get a, a heck of a deal on that um yep so just be looking for that and um like i said if you got any any questions um you know that you want to reach out to kristen and cal for uh those links the email and all that will be in the the show notes and they are always super fast on responding and everything else so well, thank Until, you, Paul. Thank you. Yeah, Alex. thank you. And like I say, thank if, you, hammockers. Yeah, and if you don't, if you don't want to purchase a hive, that's 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 fine. Uh, if you want to help us out, uh, like and share as much as you can, and that yeah. that always helps. Absolutely, we're yeah. always grateful for that. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, that will work, guys, and uh, we will holler at y'all later. Sounds good. All right. Appreciate you guys. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody. Until next week. Happy hanging, everyone. 